Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to your Life Path reading for 2022. Can you believe we are here already? So um, before we get into it, this first part of the reading is always, uh, it's an overview. So what we're gonna be looking at is 2022 as a six year. This is really important context because it's gonna tell you how the year is likely to go in its trends, its themes, the energies that we're likely to experience. And that provides an important context and a backdrop for how we're all gonna be experiencing this in or rather, you know, through the context of the, the universal year. But more importantly, how that energy is gonna play out for us really speaks to how we experience our personal year. Um, so that in itself as well is just as important. I will put a link for those uh, personal year videos in the, um, I'll put one in the description and I'll put one on the little thing floating above my head so that you can get even more into it. Um, but like I said, this part, don't skip it. It's really important that you get an idea of what we're gonna be dealing with. Uh, and I will be going very in depth this time round. So let's get straight into it. So 2022 is uh, a six year, as you now know, six is actually the number that is ruled by Venus. So we can definitely say that 2022 is going to be a much easier, a much slower paced year. It's going to be a much calmer year. Um, what I will say as well, 2021 saw us we kind of experienced a lot of change, right? A lot of upheaval, lots of sharp turns, lots of twists and turns, lots of surprises. Um, it did see a lot of advances in technology, which I talked about. It did see a lot of advances in cryptocurrency, which I talked about uh, in the 2020 videos, right? In the videos for 2021. Um, so it's great to see that this kind of tracks. Now, in terms of the universal year being the number six, it is tended towards like a slower pace. Um, it's more focused, it's more connected, it's a lot less erratic as well, which is great for all of us, especially those of us that are already naturally a little bit erratic. <laughs> um, it's gonna be a year that is directed more towards altruism, a year that's directed more to support, to connection, to balance, harmony. It's definitely gonna be a year where people really start to consider their own personal impact on things. So we're gonna see this energy of accountability is gonna to start to become a really big or really powerful theme throughout 2022. Now that accountability isn't just going to be for you know us on the microcosmic level it's going to be for all of us on the macrocosmic level as well so this is going to be about governments this is going to be about people that are in charge people that are heads of companies heads of state etc there's going to be a lot more of people expecting others to be accountable for their actions and more importantly for their impact on the wider world so as always i've got my trusty notes here so if i'm looking away that's where i am all right so in a way the buzzword for this number is number Number six year is responsibility. It's one of the biggest words that comes up for the energy of the number six, right? So it's going to come sharply into focus for all of us in some way, shape or form. Who are we responsible for? Who are we responsible to? And more importantly, how do we meet those requirements? How is it that we really show up for what and who we are responsible for? And how do we play our part, right? whether for the good or for the ill, as they say. Um, so some of the considerations that are gonna come up with this year, and these are definitely not, like it's not just limited to the things that I mentioned, you'll see many trends and themes evolve over the year, but these are the ones that I've really honed in on because I kind of feel like these are gonna be like the, they're gonna be like the structure or the skeleton of the year that really kind of shows people, right, okay, this is where we're at. So domestic life, when it comes to your home, its contents, everybody that lives within, so people that you live with or you know people that you want to live with, how can you get the most out of your home? How can you improve your home? There's gonna be a lot of decorating, interior design, um, is really going to take off this year or become a lot more prominent uh, people you know doing more development on their homes so that whole thing about construction of new homes definitely going to be a theme throughout this year um, the materials that we need in order to construct homes is also going to be a challenge over the course of this year it's a continuation in a sense yes um, but these things are really going to be highlighted um, how can you make your home look and feel better for yourself or for for the people that are dwelling inside with you. Um, 
what can you do to make your home a sanctuary, right? Because your house is what keeps you safe from the elements. It's what helps you shut the world outside out when you need to. It's supposed to be a sanctuary. It's supposed to be warm, you know, to be a place where all of your needs can be met regardless of what's happening. And I think a lot of people are really going to tap into that this year. Home, the hearth, the family, familial ties and connections, whether these are familial ties and connections that you choose or whether they're familial ties and connections that you're born to is kind of going to be irrelevant this year. It's going to be all about how do we connect? How do we, you know, bring more of that connection in? Um, these things are going to be more important than ever so I do feel like those things will definitely expand so on the wider world stage um, this is likely to translate to a housing crisis it might also be um, that we start to get more conscious of how can we eliminate the problem of homelessness we might see a big drive towards how we can start to improve uh, you know living life for people it's ridiculous it's just sorry excuse my language but it's effing ridiculous that in 2022 we still have homeless people it's just unfathomable it just doesn't make any sense it's ridiculous um okay rant over reining it in <laughs> um, all right so uh this whole thing about again right this disparity between wealth and you know the super wealthy and all the rest of it not only are we going to see more of a divide but we're going to start to see more calls to action to 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 shrinking that divide to making things more equal to making things more balanced remember this number is ruled by venus Venus is all about balance, it's all about harmony, it's all about smoothing off the rough edges. Um, so it's probably going to see us highlight in what we can do for those that are homeless in some way, shape or form. So another thing that I've got here as well is cleanliness. Um, so I believe that over the course of this year, we're going to see a much more, um, we're going to see, we're going to be more focused on cleanliness um, and how that can be a part of our daily routines, which I find this really interesting as well, um, because in ancient astrology, Demetra George writes in one of her books that um, assi uh, the one of the things that is assigned to Aquarius is uh, cleanliness, right? Which is really interesting to me because Saturn, the ruler of Aquarius, is in the sign of Aquarius. So I found that really interesting that as soon as we had this, yes, we had the pandemic and the shutdown and the lockdown and stuff, but we also had this really you know powerful stringent drive towards being more clean um now what i will say is uh, what i've got here is what is clean how do we clean and i think this is going to see a lot of developments on the wider world stage on how we can cleanse or clean our lives our homes and our bodies but in ways that aren't toxic to us or the environment so there's going to be a lot of developments on um, how we can work in harmony or in tandem with nature rather than fighting with it in some way uh, which I think is great right so we're probably going to see new technologies and uh, things developed when it comes to um, cleanliness I think this is going to have a lot to do with sound and frequency I've got this really you know powerful hit when I was doing all of the research for this year that these are going to be some of the ways that we really tap into this idea of cleansing ourselves, cleansing our space, cleansing our body. And remember, everything at the end of the day is vibration and frequency. So I think we're going to see a lot to do with developments on that front. We'll definitely be paying more attention to our oceans, our seas, our rivers and our lakes. There's going to be big focus on how to clean up our water supply, because if we don't have water, it don't matter how rich, what your status, where you're from, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ain't got water, you ain't got life period right clean water is a necessity for everybody um so uh, there's going to be more money and attention placed on the vital waters of life i definitely believe that that being said um new developments in blood cleansing and vaccinations i definitely feel 2026 is where we're going to see a massive advancement towards um a cure or a vaccine for hiv and various other um illnesses as well so when it comes to healing, we're definitely going to see a big focus on this as well. A lot of the new age methods will start to really gain prominence. Um, now, when I say new age, what I actually mean is ancient ways of healing. 
herbalism, um, you know, medical astrology, uh, sound, frequency, vibration, all of those things, energy healing. We're going to see all of these things really start to come to the fore. Natural, um, non-toxic, non-invasive ways of healing are going to really prevail over this year. And here's the beauty of it. I don't think that this is going to pit us at odds with the medical tradition. I actually feel like we're going to start to see a dovetail. This is where we're going to start to see how can we fuse these things? How can we really find ways um, to, to, you know, to, to integrate the two, which will be uh, brilliant. I definitely think we're going to see um, an expansion of such things. Uh, sound healing, frequency, vibrational healing will definitely come to the fore. Um, I also think that uh, medical advancement, medical science is definitely going to advance this year. Like I really believe that. But as a result, I think we're going to see more and more of a crossover between the two. Um, if not at a global level, then at least at a grassroots level. And that grassroots level of everything is going to be very important this year because it's going, it's, we're going to see a lot more of that. All right. We're going to start to see less of the, uh, um, we're going to have, we're going to start to see it more on the, uh, on the microcosmic level, let's say. Um, herbalism, definitely going to be a revival. Green get together and more group, group healing work as well is definitely going to start to expand. So when we talk about spiritual progression, uh, to be spiritual is to be organized and in harmony with all that surrounds you and all that you encounter. Um, so just like its upside down counterpart, the number six has a natural draw towards leaving the world and people better than you find them, right? Six is actually the number that is all about responsibility and service. It's the energy of the agony aunt or the healer or the mystic or the... Um, you know, the, the, the maintenance or the caregiver, right? So it's all about leaving things and people or even environments better than you find them. We're going to see a lot of this this year and a lot of drive towards that. This uh, energy as well can be known as the fixer energy. So it takes problems, challenges and issues and it will lovingly and painstakingly work on them until they're dissipated or, you know, removed altogether. Um, it's actually a very spiritual number in that sort of sense. And because, you know, the highest form of spirituality is to be of service to the universe in some way, shape or form. Um, I truly believe that. Now, um, this is, uh, it's, what I've put here is, uh, it's the cleansing ritual before the magic and the enchantment of the year seven, 2023 kicks in, right? So for those of you that are into this kind of thing, six is the year of the clearing and the cleansing of the space before you set your enchantment or your intention forth uh, in the seven or the spiritual sphere, all right? So uh, it's an important aspect or a part of this, um, that people often overlook, right? So remember, all steps are important in the in the process of manifesting something. You know, you can't leave one out and that means not leaving out the cleansing stage as well. Uh, all right, so on the wider world stage, we're definitely going to see more care towards service providers, healthcare workers and professionals, people that actually showed up for us when it really bleeping mattered. Like, we're going to see a lot more kindness and courtesy towards those people, if not from, you know, the, the, the oligarchs and all of the hierarchical stuff, certainly from the people on the, on the, the ground below. Um... All right, so support and connection. This is a very supportive energy. It's very connective. Six has that natural pull, that natural draw towards harmonizing things, bridging the gaps between things that maybe don't have any connection and finding a way to create one. Um, it means as well um, taking taking form from uh, from one thing to to give to another. So this may very well see. So 2020 and 2021, we saw a lot of wealth transference from the majority of the people to the minority of the people. 2022 is going to start to see the opposite. It's the way that universal law works, right? You can't have something that is unbalanced. The universe doesn't like it, uh, just like it doesn't like a vacuum, right? So it's very, very interesting to see how this will come out. Um, this divide between the wealthy and the poor, it, we're definitely going to see more of a spotlight on it. Um, if it goes ignored, there will be 
a lot of noise and a relentless drive towards making it better for everybody as opposed to just a certain few. Um, so let that be a universal warning <laughs> to those. <laughs> <laughs> those that are in charge don't shoot the messenger i'm just a vessel um this will definitely be the starting of the community living so lots of lots of people have talked about this and we know it's coming through in the astrology as well 2022 is where we're really going to see this stuff start to happen it's actually going to become a reality we're going to see communities popping up left right and center people will be demanding more connection more community more sense of pulling together um, if they don't get it and it's not present in the world then they'll just create it themselves it will literally just be that like okay well what we want and what we need isn't being provided so we'll do it our damn selves and once we've done that there's not going to be any standing in our way because we declare our own right so you know i love it um it will definitely be more about people coming together and living together as well more sharing more caring is the name on the, 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 the is the name and the number of venus beauty and romance so while this number is very practical it's also very venusian in a sense uh, it does appreciate anything and everything natural we're going to see a draw towards more sort of neutral colors with lots more pastel colors things that are a lot more please excuse me things that are a lot more pleasing to the eye things that are lighter brighter and more caring so 2021 was a lot about sort of you know what was really in your face and really bold and really deep and all the rest of it whereas 2022 it's going to be a lot more sort of smoother so i've put here pastels in greens yellows and blues gentle color palettes are definitely going to be way more favorable um, as will gentle um, makeups, anything that is natural, that's kind to the skin, that's kind to the environment, that's easy to make without destroying the environment, all of this is going to be to the fore. Startups that promise, oh gosh, um, startups that promise to be. Um, you know, kind to the environment or to to offer more in the way of. Um, you know kindness to flora and fauna will definitely come up over the course of this year for sure also the demand for more greenery the demand for more natural feel to things for more open spaces more room for animals more connection to with and for nature is going to be to the forefront and again if we don't get it people will just start to create it um people are definitely going to start walking away from cities anywhere that's too built up where you're living on on top of each other like you know sardines and stuff it's just not the way of it anymore people want more space more openness and more freedom where they can gather more together um and you know again if they don't get it they'll just make it themselves um they want clean fresh natural open spaces that have a community or communal feel to it there's a need or a call for more uh, that's where the money is going to be flowing as well so if you're thinking about starting a business think about all of the things that i've mentioned are going to come up over the course of this year because this is just the seeding of it it's not like oh here it's 2022 and that's all that's going to be and you know then it's done this is like literally that's you know this is the chance really for you to get ahead of the next gold rush i guess all right so what people will be interested in People are going to be interested in things and people that roll up their sleeves and get stuck in and help others. The beauty is in the dirt, in the mud, in the sweat, in the beauty, in the fucking crotch of everything that you are, right? This is about getting stuck into things with the deepest aspects of yourself. It's not about surface stuff. It's about coming together. It's about really being... Um, accountable and responsible and you know thinking about other people rather than just yourself those are going to be the things that are sexy this year that's going to be the stuff that really gets people fired up um, the elements and how they affect and change us rain on the skin air in the lungs grass under your toes and in between your toes and sand in your toes I get really excited because I'm a hobbit at heart you know give me a tree to put my back to a book maybe some music don't necessarily need it but and you know a wide open expanse with my toes in the grass you got me for life i'm happy i don't need much um, all right uh we'll definitely see a lot of kickback between companies and their workers 
Why? Six is the number of the home and the hearth. And as I said to you last year, this whole idea of going back to the office, a lot of people are just done with it. They're over it. They, they don't want it, right? And they, they will continue to kind of hold back from that. So a word to companies, etc. Think about ways that you can sort of maybe create a more blended feel where people can spend more time at home and some time in the office. Because if you try to just get them to come back to this whole nine to five in the grind thing, it just it's, it's just not going to work. It's already started falling apart. All right, people want comfort, connection, community, and ease. Uh, that's got more weight than the high powered career this year, right? Six is bringing a reckon in. Um, it, it really is. Okay, so Jupiter falling or moving into the sign of Pisces is directly feeding into all of this. So Jupiter is the great magnifier, the great expander, the great uh, lord of abundance and growth children and spiritual law. So I've said this before and I will definitely say it again. I think we're going to see a, a massive drive to not drive towards, but I think we're going to see a lot of babies born in 2022 for sure. Um, the big man of kings and universal law is what I've put here. Um, all of it sounds wonderful for the most part and it is. But consider this, Pisces is the 12th sign. It's a placement uh, of a lot of politics and people that are in politics, which minds we, we might see as well. I think we're going to see a few meteoric rises of certain politicians or people that kind of seem to come out of nowhere and all, all of a sudden find themselves, you know, at the top with lots of followers or really, you know, standing out in their message or in their speech. If they meet the needs and the wants and the will of the people, they will survive. If not, it will be a collective thumbs down. It's gonna be more and more that the will of the people starts to rule from here on in. Um, so again, let that be a, a, a message to those of you that are in charge. So Pisces is all things and no thing at once. It's got no boundaries. It's a double bodied water sign. As such, it's got no boundaries and it means that we do have quite a lot to consider in this sense because if Jupiter expands things and Pisces has no boundaries, this is like literally an expansion of that boundlessness. Um, so this is something to consider. Um, it's also going to be, I talked about the huge wave of babies that might be coming in from here on in. Um, we now see a dissolving of certain ideas and also places. Um, the European Union might start to crumble or dissolve. Not saying it will, but just a, a, an idea. Uh, borders between countries may also start to come down or the lines may get very blurred. Um, Neptune's already in Pisces. So we're gonna see a lot of legalized drugs this year. Um, and maybe in places where they haven't been before, maybe where places where it's been a little bit more taboo, etc. Um, I think we're definitely going to see a drop in the crime rate, which I talked about in, uh, if you, any of you purchased my 2022 videos, I talked a lot about this um, for 2022 in uh, those. So if you've seen the, the sign videos, then you know I talked about this. Um, Whatever has been hidden will come to light in powerful ways. And then finally, as Jupiter is the ruler of spiritual law, we're going to see more than a few cases of miracles, but it's also going to be vital to have your wits about you, right? It's important that you don't allow yourself to be hoodwinked this year because there are going to be a few rises of gurus, etc. Um, and as we drive towards more people cultivating a need for spirituality, especially as we get to 2023, um, it's going to be important to use your own discernment, especially for some of the stuff that we see, because we might see some weird stuff in 2022 still. Um, you know, just be aware that that is the case. Now, I have said to everybody, building a solid spiritual practice for 2022 is going to be vital because that spiritual practice and that spiritual work that you do in 2022 is going to offer you the life raft or the rope to get you through the murky weirdness that is going to be 2023. I make no bones about saying this, right? Uh, for those of you that have seen the webinar that I did with Heather from Astrology with Heather, we talked about uh, the next five years from 2020 right through to 2025. 
it's going to be an interesting time for sure but 2023 was the year that really stood out to me as being like okay yeah this is going to be a really weird year right we're going to see some odd stuff 2022 but it will be the the real weird sort of murky what the hell is going on that will be 2023 so finally energy medicine witchcraft occult things astrology numerology tarot human design all of these systems are going to be more in demand than ever. We might see some kickback from them. Integrity is going to be everything. Those tarot readers, astrologers, numerologists, human design readers, witches, all the rest of it. The ones that have integrity will be the ones that really do well this year. Remember Jupiter is in its home sign of Pisces. So while there'll be an expansion of these things... It will be the ones that have integrity, the ones that are on point, the ones that are not charlatans, basically, that will be the ones that continue to grow, whereas everybody else will kind of fall to the wayside. Um, and then finally, let me be clear, the age of the guru while coming to an end will be going out with a bang. All right, so you're going to have to see this. And I do feel that we're going to see a lot of, not a lot of, but certainly some of the bigger ones will be taking a tumble because the smoke and mirrors energy just not going to cut it this year all in all i think this can be a very beautiful year maybe one that is a little bit excessive uh possibly even a little bit pedantic in its energies remember it is venus ruled so maybe the dark side is that people just want more luxury because they've been denied so many things um, but it is going to be lighter, it is going to be brighter, it is going to be easier, more down to earth and certainly better than anything we've experienced over the course of the last three years. With that said, stick around and we will get into your life path reading for 2022. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you soon. Hello you beautiful Life Path 5 person you, welcome to your 12 month tower breakdown, let's get straight into it. Before we start as always I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance and I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to talk about how the numerology of this year is going to speak directly to you through the guise of your own life path number. So as a life path five, um, the way that this energy interacts, some of the things that you might experience or the energies that you might experience over the course of this year are... Uh, it might be a, so this is actually a year where you want to really take things at a slower pace right so uh, this year tends to be lived a, mo a lot more for you on the internal planes and the way that the uh, the energy the overall energy of the year was going to speak to your number it really is about developing and cultivating your inner self more so than the external um, experience that you're having so one of the things that I, well, yeah, something that you really want to give yourself time and effort and energy over to this year is not only your internal or inner world, but also giving time to your internal, uh, your intuitive and your spiritual pursuits, right? So this is a really good year to develop your psychic awareness. This is a great year for you to delve into some form of spirituality. I've talked about why that's a good year, good idea for this year in general, but especially because of the ways that these energies combine for you, this is an especially good idea, right? Um, so, also, this is a good year for you to spend time looking at the plans, the things that you set into motion, the things that you've decided to create, the things that you've already started moving on. This is the time to check on those seeds that you planted. Do they have enough water? Is the soil right? Right. This is a, a metaphor, obviously. Um, everything that you want to grow in your life, treat it like a seed. Have I created the right conditions? Is it getting enough sunlight? Is there enough enough love? Enough, uh, you know, who has <laughs> co2 that it's getting like there's so many things that you have to consider this year about your plans in that way right so take time to look at to refine or enhance your plans in any way shape or form this is a really good year for you to collaborate connect like connect to other people collaborate build partnerships forge networks in some way shape or form 
One thing that I will say to you though, this is not a year where you can just charge ahead. You will need other people in order to make the things that you want to do flourish. In order for those things to thrive, you are gonna need outside um, input, resources, assistance, and it's really wise for you this year to go at the other person's pace. So whoever you're connected to, whoever you're partnered up with, whoever you're collaborating with, let them dictate the pace so that you can move ahead you know in a way that is even you tend to have more energy than most people and you tend to have um i wouldn't say five energy is not necessarily known for its longevity i'm sorry to say um you know because it's it's fast it's dynamic energy and if you try to contain it for too long it gets bored and then just goes off into a different <laughs> you know in a different path and that's not actually a bad thing but obviously as a partnership, as a connection, as a collaboration, you have to consider the other person's pace. So go at their pace so that you can speed up when you need to, or you can slow down if you have to, all right? Um, establish solid partnerships, personal, so when this comes to your personal life, your professional life, your platonic life, whatever aspect of your collaborate, collaborative efforts this year, um, make sure those solid, those partnerships are solid. Make sure that they're people that you can trust. Make sure that they're people that you can rely on. People that will do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. Um, I will say this is a year as well. Don't expect quick results, all right? If you're looking for fast cash, if you're looking for fast anything this year, I'm sorry to say six is not known for its speed or brevity. The way that these energies combine and they uh, deliver a number to you, also energy that doesn't speak to quick results, right? So this is a year to slowly, steadily, and persistently build on whatever it is that you're trying to create, on whatever it is that you're trying to bring into the world in some way, shape, or form. Um, now, in the other, on the other side of this, partnerships, collaborations, moving at others' pace, yes, absolutely. But don't expect too much this year, right, from people. If you make too many demands, if you are too demanding in what you want, in what you need, if you're too one-sided in the way that you, um, you know, you know, in the way that you show up for anything, it will probably work against you in some way. So just keep that in mind, right? Um, check in with ideas, uh, not ideas, check in with your ideologies, with your morals and with your ethics, right? This is a really good year for you to get very acquainted with why you do what you do, why you believe what you believe and what the underlying factors of those things actually are versus what you think they are, right? This is, in this regard, this is actually a very powerful year of internal, um, I wouldn't say change, but internal realization, all right? And then finally, um, this is going to be a year where ideas will be three and four a penny and some of them you might really want to move ahead with the energy is not favored for that right and so this is that and that doesn't mean that you can't use these ideas it just means that they're these are things that you should save for another moment these are things that you should save for a moment where all of the things that you need in order to make that happen align. You'll have lots of great insight, lots of great realizations this year. It just means that they're not necessarily for now. These are things that are meant to be filed away. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, I know for me personally, when I have like a really great idea or an idea for an article or for a post or whatever, um, I know sometimes when I'm having this, I'm like, no, I've got way too much on for this to be relevant right now. So I'll write it as a note in my phone or I'll voice note it at the time. And then, you know, when I'm checking through my thing, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Just because it's it's not it's not happening right now or it's not relevant for right now doesn't mean that it can't be super successful at a later date, all right? This is a year to really remember and discover that you, Life Path 5 person with all of that boundless energy, are human too. And unfortunately, even you need to slow down and rest and recoup for a bit. All right, so your blessings this year integrity you're going to be all about this stuff anyway uh, which a lot of you tend to be and um, that's the one thing about five like yes it's kind of a love you hard and leave you quick <laughs> kind of energy um right it absolutely is just calling a spade a spade um 
but you tend to you tend to find that life path five people do have a lot of integrity like they're usually the first person to fight for the underdog um very brave in the face of danger like you know will put themselves out to help other people or to save other people as well so you know you you guys do have a lot of integrity but this year it's going to be you know it, we like really settling in on a very deep level partnerships inner growth and spirituality these are all areas that you could really excel in this year uh, so lessons or challenges not ideal for business um, and you might find there are more upheavals and up and downs in business this year than you would hope for but that doesn't mean that it's not you know it, it, if you just chase that solely, yeah, you're probably going to have quite a tough year. Whereas, you know, if you get collaborators in and if you take it at a pace and accept that sometimes ish happens, you, you, you'll be fine this year. Ethical kickbacks, where you are out of your integrity or you are acting in it unethically, it, it will catch up with you quickly this year. Um, all right, it's a slow year, so this might be a real challenge for you guys. And finally, um, this is a year for others, right? It's not so much a self-centered or self-focused year, which kind of makes sense, right? Especially given that last year, 2021 was a five year, so it was all about you, right? This year is all about everyone else. It's all about others. It's about the external world and what its needs are from you through that self-realization and understanding of you know the internal world all right so let's get into your cards right before we start as always i would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love light peace prosperity and abundance and i pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good so for your um all right, so you'll get one destiny card and one direction card per month, and we're gonna go through the month. So if you haven't seen them yet, the 2022 sign videos, astrological sign videos are up and out there. There'll be a link floating above my head and uh, you can get those in the link in the description. Um, they go into a lot more depth with some of the astrological stuff and the eclipses, etc. Here you'll just get an overview. All right, but I believe as well that your first card out kind of sets the tone for the type of year that you're gonna have. So this year you get the chariot card, right? So. Although I said it's gonna be a slow year, the chariot card is actually a very fast card. Now, one thing that you do need to be aware of, the chariot can very often lead to the tower, right? So this is a year for you to take it at a pace. If you just charge in and just completely go rushing in, the chances are you're gonna have some challenges or some issues arise, right? This is, you know, when you drive too fast and it's like hard to control the car, this is kind of like a, a nod to that. Now, on a personal level, one of the things that I love about the chariot card, it's about conquering an aspect of self, right? The, the biggest or greatest, um, the biggest or the greatest uh, victory that we can ever have in life is over ourselves, is over some aspect of ourselves that is unconscious. And this card really does speak to you being able to conquer some aspect of yourself this year in a way that really supports the the place that you want to the place that you want to take your life but more importantly the person that you actually want to become that you want to be known for that you want to be remembered for so um on top of that you have the ace of pentacles right so for a select few of you not only could this be i mean for some of you this could be a purchase of some land right out of the gate here in january now i'm going to be honest with you because it is the ace of pentacles you're more likely to find the new home that you want to move to maybe find the piece of land that you want to buy maybe this is you you know uh, maybe you decide deciding actually you know what i want to completely change I want to completely change my industry the chances are like it's totally possible for you right the energy is absolutely there and supportive for it it just suggests that you're going to have to make some adjustments on that internal plane and taking it slowly really is the way to go there are going to be numerous opportunities right out of the gate for this year for you making more money or finding new ways to earn money um, you know maybe creating a new revenue stream for some of you is totally possible it also suggests as well some of you could be having a meeting or an interview that takes you out of your locality and because you've got the chariot card there 
Maybe some of you are having, in, you know, interviews for international work. Maybe some of you are having uh, interviews for jobs that are going to take you halfway across the country. There's definitely a possibility of some big change coming up for you straight out of the gate. So um, on the 15th of January, Mercury will be retrograde from the sign of Aquarius back into the sign of Capricorn on uh, and right the way through uh, January until the 29th, Venus will be retrograde. So just be aware that those energies are floating around. For February, you have the Justice card. The Justice card has been very active for February. It's come up in, I think so far, like three or four different decks in this same position, which tells me that on the wider world stage, there's likely to be something taking place with, um, with the legal system. There might be something that is enforced. This could be some kind of uh, new contract that is coming into the fore or being spoken about on the wider world stage. It also tells me as well, I think we're gonna be something, I think we're going to see something happening with China not sure what i can't tell you to be fair not just from one card not even just from two but i definitely feel like there'll be something happening around or with that space of the world uh, and then on top of that we've got the seven of cups right so if you are signing any contracts in february please be careful right um i have to say based on the cards I would prefer you sign something in January. The energy is a lot stronger. The Seven of Cups for me is not an energy that you want to, to sign anything under. And the reason I say that is because the Justice card is a contract or a commitment. You've got this with the Seven of Cups. So there's two ways this could play out. One, this might be something where you are, maybe you're really unclear on what your duties are, maybe what's being expected of you or what's being asked of you and you're kind of voicing that opinion like, I'm not really sure what you're asking me for here. Um, for those of you that are, um, yeah, yeah, and then on the other side of this as well, this could be some, some agreement or maybe even a legally binding contract that you get into that you realize, you know, quite quickly, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I thought it was. If you are putting your name to anything, if you're committing to anything in February, please, please, please get a second pair of eyes before you put your name on the dotted line. Um, and then for March, you have the death card, right? Endings, completions, culminations. I will say this to you as well, right? March could be a time where something comes to an end almost, I wanna say like almost by completely out of the blue. And it does feel like it's gonna be like, you know, something just ends or something completes and you're like, okay, you know what? That's done and it's done. It's almost like you're not even holding on to it, which is kind of like a, a life path five person anyway. You've got this with the Seven of Swords, right? So that I believe is an interruption. And I will say this, on the wider world stage, I do believe we're gonna see the death of a prominent figure. And I think it's gonna be under some pretty shady circumstances. I think when it happens, everyone's gonna be like, hang on a sec, this doesn't make any sense, or it doesn't feel like that was the, you know, the story that we're being told or sold is definitely not the story that it is. Um, I almost want to say my money's on Ghislaine Maxwell, but we'll see. Um, now, with that said, you know, I touch wood as well, by the way, I'm not smiling because I think that's funny. I don't think it's funny that anybody is, uh, you know, dies or whatever. Anyway, um, now, on a more microcosmic level, on a personal level, this could be a time where maybe something comes to an end. Maybe this is a job, maybe it's a partnership, maybe it is a collaboration. Again, I just get the feeling that the, it's almost like the, um, the, 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 I, not the idea, the, the, the example or the reason that you're being given is not the, the one that it actually is, right? So just be aware of that. There could be some form of deception that comes up in March, and I just want you to be aware that it's a possibility. Now, there is something else here in these cards that I do need to talk about, um, and I have to be really honest, right, to say what I see. That is the, the task that I have taken upon myself to be a tower reader. That could literally, 
and I touch wood and I truly hope I'm wrong on this front, right? I, I hope that nothing that I say in this regard comes to pass, but that could literally be a near death experience. And the reason I say that is because the Seven of Swords can sometimes be um, making it through something by the skin of your teeth, like, you know, like really, really close. And then the death card, right? So that speaks to me of an NDE. Um, for some of you, this could be a really close call that shows up. And I really hope I'm wrong on that front. Moving on to brighter stuff. You have the eclipse in April. On April the 30th, you've got that powerful Taurus solar eclipse. The first real sort of sort of real eclipse that we're going to feel in that um, Taurus Scorpio axis. You have this with the moon card, of course you do. Um, all right, so this could be two things. One, um, April, my money is on something or someone coming up from the past. And this could be, again, this could be a personal illumination. Pay attention to your dreams around this time because they're likely to be speaking to you in some very powerful and possibly quite vivid kind of ways. This comes up with the death card as well. All right, look, we can't get past it. We can't get away from it. So one way that this could show up with the death card, this could be something or someone from your past. You could hear news of somebody passing. Maybe this is, you know, anyone from the first person that you dated in high school right to right up to and including you know like a really friendly neighbor um that's one way that this could show up um the reason i say this would be someone from your past is because the moon card is here and again look there's just this energy of like and the moon card can sometimes be nebulous where things aren't necessarily clear where we don't have the full story or all of the results or all of the the uh, the facts and i really feel that this is going to be something on the wider world stage that we're seeing it's like someone died or you know so and so has i don't know fallen off a building or you know touch wood i hope i'm wrong but there's just something really sort of nebulous around this where it's like whatever story or narrative is being sold is not the truth of the matter at all and it will come out with this combination of cards it does suggest the truth will out on a more personal level um please really pay attention to your dreams really pay attention to your dreams because they're going to be speaking to you a lot for some of you you might be dreaming of people that you know have passed over you might be dreaming of people that are you know maybe that you lost when you were younger and they suddenly start coming to you and giving you all this information and telling you all these amazing things that's one way that this could play out another way that this could play out is because it's it's the death card on the moon this is death by water this could be a ferry goes down um, you know, uh, sorry to talk about such heavy things, but I gotta say what I see. Um, and that's the way that I feel it. This could be, you know, death by water of some sort. Now, one of the things that I did talk about for 2022 was I believe that there is going to be another tsunami. And I wonder if it's around this time. Um, could just as easily be a hurricane, but my money is on a wave. I don't know why I've felt that for a long time. All right, let's get out of the doom and gloom for the second eclipse. It's going to be a lunar eclipse on the 16th of May in the sign of Scorpio. And we've also got a Mercury retrograde. This Mercury retrograde will start in Gemini and it will retrogress back into the sign of Taurus. And for that, we have the Empress, right? So finally, some, some good news. This is abundance and blessings, but it's also gossip, right? So again, Whatever's going on in, in uh, eight, March and April, we might very well see some gossip, some information coming forward, coming to light. And this comes up with the Five of Swords. So for you on a personal level, be very conscious of disputes, fights, challenges or issues. Anything where you're having words with somebody, right? It might start really small, but it could end up getting sort of blown out of all proportion. May, I will say this to you as well, be careful what you write online, be careful what you say to people in the digital sphere. I think it was Michelle Knight said that once it's out there on the internet, right, there's no bringing it back. 
<laughs> I think about some of the things that I've said over the years and I'm like, oh God, that's going to be uncomfortable. Or it's not, because to be honest with you, at the time that I posted it, I obviously believed it. Um, you know, I'm one of these people that is able, like if I'm presented with facts to the contrary, I can take that on board. You know, change is the constant. You're a life path five anyway, so you get it. Um, all right, but yeah, just be really careful uh, about arguments, disputes, especially arguments and disputes about land, about homes, about things that you're purchasing, about anything to do with the material world, right? So this could be uh, an interesting one as well. Because of this energy here, I wonder as well if May could also be some challenges or issues that arise over an inheritance. Um, just something to be aware of, all right? For June, you have the Temperance card, right? So things will start to level off as we come into June. Looks like a, a bit of a rocky start to the year, doesn't it, to be completely honest with you? But hey, listen, it can only get better from here on in, right? The fact that you have the Temperance card here and you've got this next to the Five of Swords, I'm tempted, or not tempted, I'm going to say to you, this would be a time where not allowing yourself to get sucked into the melee, right? This is just because other people get on stage and start spitting out their dummies doesn't mean that you need to. This comes up with the judgment card. So this is gonna be a moment of a grand reveal, right? So wherever you've been done a wrong, wherever you've been lied to, wherever maybe you've been slandered or somebody said something about you or tried to present you in a way that isn't actually you. I mean, because another thing is this could be a character assassination. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, like a physical or actual death, but I kind of feel like this stuff will write itself around June. Um, you've got the judgment card as well. And with the temperance card, this could be you finding some new sense of spirituality. This could be you tapping into a new religion. Maybe you're tapping into a new spiritual path. For some of you, this could be you tapping into the, you know, the religion or the spirituality of your ancestors, really doing some of that very, very deep, deep work. For July, you've got the star card. So this is where your people and your community or your tribe are going to start to really come through for you. It also gives me this energy of you being in a much brighter space, right? So as you come out of that second quarter of the year, as you come out of that sort of first half of the year, let's say, things really do hit a turning point once you get to June, but as you get into July, they really start to ramp up. Uh, if you're planning to launch a website, if you're planning to do anything of that nature, um, June, July looks like a good time. This will also be a really good time to really figure out who your community actually is. Who are the people that you wanna live with? What is the area that you wanna live around? Um, you know, and you're gonna need to see, like, you know, they say representation matters. It really does. And I think this year you're gonna, certainly in July, you're gonna need that sense of, yes, this community is a place where I'm safe. Yes, this is people that get me. Yes, this is people that, you know, if the, if the fans, excuse my language, I would be able to count on or rely on somebody. Oh, nice, and this comes up with the star card. For, so for those of you that are planning to study astrology, you, my money is on July, right? If you're planning to study astrology or start any astrological learning, July is the month for you to get going on it, right? So find a good teacher. Um, I can suggest two, <laughs> you know, depending on which you want to learn. But yeah, July, is, I mean, because the star card coupled with the sun is literally astrology. So the astrology is gonna be bang on in July. And it's also a really good time for you to think about studying astrology, taking up astrology, or doing something with the astrological there, with the astrological knowledge that you have. For August, you have the hanged man, right? So taking a beat in August, taking it down to ground, remembering that you have remembering that you've got inner faculties that will speak just as loudly as the external reality to you. The other thing is as well, because this card is about reassessment and reevaluation, for some of you, you could be reevaluating a partnership, as in a relationship. For some of you, you could be reevaluating re re a job or a profession or a career. I don't know why, but I just get this sense that when August comes, you're gonna have a moment where you're like, okay, I need to stand still. 
I need to think about where I'm going, what's next, what is the next, uh, you know, where do I go from here, basically. And I feel like for a lot of you, this might be a very different or a very new or novel direction. And this comes up with the Empress. This is a month for you to create, right? So the Empress coupled with the Hanged Man, this is all kinds of fun stuff like interior design. This can also be uh, digital web design, especially because you've got the star card in close proximity. Um, I would also say as well, this would be a really good time to re-upholster, uh, you know, furniture. If you want to get into set design, stage design, interior design, anything to do with the creative energies um, is highly favoured for August. So if you're launching into a new career or you're trying to decorate a home or, you know, beautify a home, August is a great month to do so. Like I said, you are, it does feel like you're going in a very different direction. So maybe you had, you know, this plan for what you wanted to, the house to look like from here on in, but then you go in a completely different direction. As we come into September, third and final Mercury retrograde begins in the sign of Libra, will retrogress back into the sign of Virgo. And for that, you have the devil card, right? So they say the devil is in the details. And I definitely believe that. Um, what I will say to you though, is September could be a month where you are overdoing it. Whether this is uh, physically, whether it's exercise, sex, drugs, rock and roll, maybe you're being too picky, maybe you're obsessing about something. I would say to you for September, give your, because you've just come off of this sort of like high of creating everything and you know, doing everything new, etc give yourself some time to see where you're actually at and this comes up with the eight of wands the first thing that i want to say to you is september do not get into any form of gossip right this is not a month where you should get into any kind of he said she said hearsay business because the chances are that is gonna it's gonna come around right to bite you in the butt um <sighs> And it could be as well, like maybe you say something like, you know, like sometimes it's easy to get sucked into something and start speculating. That could be the case and you might think nothing of it. And you know, whatever your part was, whatever you said, whatever, it could be taken completely out of context and something that you say could really be blown out of proportion and then suddenly the whole thing is your fault this would be a time to be very, very conscious about what you say in certain company, all right? So just be careful with that. It could also be a time where you are exhibiting some of those workaholic tendencies, juggling so many balls that you're not actually, uh, you, you know, that you end up dropping one or two, or maybe all of them. Um, this also <laughs> appears to be a time where you could be having a problem or a challenge with a teacher or a mentor, all right? So just keep that in mind. For um, October, this is the uh, third and final, uh, no, this is the second eclipse be season beginning, right? So on October 25th, got that uh, uh, solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. So whatever you initiate around this time will complete or culminate in the new year, all right? For this, you have the Hermit card. October is a time to lay low. And interestingly enough, the Hermit card has been very active for October, even in different decks. Um, I'm going to have to look into this and see, because there's obviously some... This was the thing that I found really interesting about doing the 2021 year ahead readings. I started to see patterns and see, right, okay, this period of the year, this is happening. And that kind of moment of the year, this is going on. And... So it'll be interesting to see. I'm going to sit back over these and kind of give it some, some thought. Laying low, taking time out. Uh, this would be a really good time to not get into any crap with anybody. But more importantly, this is a time to give back to yourself, right? That hermit card sees you separating yourself from the crowd or the pack in some way. You got this with the two of pentacles. This is very nice looking at looking after the money the resources the finances for a lot of you this could be a moment at which you are considering your next investment whether it's a hard asset whether it's crypto whether it's going to be stocks and shares um 
there's something here that suggests that you're making some, and I feel like this will be moves that you're making behind the scenes of a financial nature, of a monetary nature. So maybe this is a big purchase. Maybe this is you deciding, right, you know what? That uh, inheritance money that I got, you know, that finally came good. Um, I'm going to put into stocks and shares and bonds or I'm going to buy so much crypto or like I said whatever it is there's a financial slant to this and it's like whatever you're doing there's going to be an element of I want to keep this silent I want to keep this to myself whatever I'm working on I'm working on behind the scenes away from public eye um, in November whatever is initiated started or uh, is brought to light in april will be culminating completing or finishing here in november on november 8th we've got the uh, lunar eclipse in the sign of taurus and for this you have the lovers card right L partnerships relationships love connections you've got this next to the two of pentacles as well which tells me that november the collective financial pot for those of you that are partnered married in long-term commitments the collective financial pot is either being looked at again or being revised in some way um you know maybe just maybe you and your partner don't agree with what you should be doing with a large sum of money that you have or have access to you'll figure it out because you've got the lover's card so it's not going to be that bad um and it comes up with the six of swords right so the six of swords is the number six you've got the the lover's card there which is also number six two sixes can represent irritability so don't be surprised if you and your partner are having a little bit of friction around this time for those of you that are single if you are meeting somebody you're going to meet somebody on your travels the six of swords is very much a card of overseas you know people that are very different from foreign cultures etc so for some of you, this could be the initiating or cementing of a relationship. For some of you, this could be a little bit of friction. But remember, two sixes is also balance, right? So this suggests to me that November could also be a month where you and your partner do have some moments of friction, but you finally manage to get it together in the end. And then finally, for the December, you've got the strength card. Um, for me, the strength card, you know, along with all of its other meanings, is very often about our physical body. So you want to be looking after your health in December, especially. And this comes up with the Six of Wands. This is beautiful, right? So the Six of Wands, victory, success, maybe something that you stuck into has really come good, right? Something that you had to persevere with, something that you, you maybe weren't sure whether it was gonna take place, whether it was gonna happen. Now you've got the lover's card, number six, you've got the six of swords and you've got the six of wands. Three sixes represent success, right? So whatever the challenge or issue is with you and a partner, whatever it is that you put your money into or invest into, it comes good for you as does looking after your health, right? So for some of you, this could be coming through a health situation, coming through some sort of challenge in that regard. I really like December for you, actually. Um, it's kind of like one of those moments of, you know what, all the hard work and the effort was worth it. That perseverance got me through, right? So for your key to the year, you have... the gate eight and contribution so if this year is all about partnerships connections and collaborations being 100 percent clear on what your personal contribution is on what you bring to the table on what you bring to enhancing the world around you and everything in it and all of the connections and collaborations that you're a part of that's where you really dig into what makes you uniquely you and why what you bring to the table is so very special all right so your challenging months for this year will look february right the way through may to be honest with you do not look like easy months they do look like quite challenging months um i like june actually i like july um i even like august i think these three months are really nice um, I'm a big fan of October and I also like December and even November could be nice as well. January is a power month for you. I think you start the year very, very strong, but there's going to be a lot of figuring things out on the way. Um, 
all in all though, I think not necessarily a bad year. Let me know in the comments how it shapes up for you. I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have an amazing 2022. I really hope it's your best year yet. Let me know how it turns out. Check in maybe month by month. If you haven't seen it yet, don't forget to get your um, 2022 sign readings. Take care and I'll see you soon.